Today, I believe the world has forgotten that education takes on many forms. It goes well beyond the stacks of books we find in libraries, the shiny little tablets we see in every school system, even the traditional classroom that you send your kids to every day. Education is a process, a process that fosters learning. It's about experiencing different things. It's about understanding that's gathering information, skills, values, even beliefs. Education is also about experiences. These experiences allow you to feel, changes your thoughts, even your actions. Education is used by people. People that are looking to use this information and these experiences to acquire knowledge and wisdom. Now, there's no set tools for the delivery of education. There's all types of people. Some people look for the written language. They study. They read. They read every blog, every book, every post, trying to find that last bit of information. Well, there's people like me that are visual learners. We have to see it, draw it, sketch it to really understand how it works. Then you got the people that are hands-on. You know, the ones that feel it, touch it, break it. The thinkers, the doers. But then you also have people that need structure. Structured learning, the checklist, the step-by-step -step process, because that ensures they're hitting every single milestone that they can possibly do. And then, of course, being here in the South, we love storytelling. That's the verbal exchange of information that allows you to be on part of the journey. Now, it really doesn't matter which one you use. It's still all about learning. Well, I was fortunate. I grew up here in nowhere, Alabama. Most have told me that that is a disadvantage when it comes to education. But I will argue with you and tell you, living on a farm, being surrounded by an environment that allowed me and challenged me to grow and learn, it's way better than any school that I've ever been in. Now, but education frequently is handled by the guidance of educators. You know, the teachers the professors, those who have been trained to learn how to deliver information. And yes, some people even say your parents, but we all know we know more than our parents, right? But you also find those people in life that affect you that you had no idea that was going to happen. Eventually, you call them mentors. Well, luckily for me, I had one really close. It's my father. My father is a cotton farmer, no college education. He wasn't trained professionally to be an educator, but probably one of the greatest teachers I've ever had. It's taken me a lifetime to figure out the depth and wisdom of all of those lessons. But it's those lessons that are a foundation of everything I am today. Now, I bet you're wondering why I brought this big old rock on stage. Well, this is a tool that my father used to teach me things. So, let's go back a little ways. I'm nine years old. Little Owen's running around amazed at the world. Everything around you is just like, oh, this is amazing. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Well, my father, alongside of being a farmer, he also did a lot of rock work. 
This helped pay the bills. It also helped pay for everything me and my younger brother broke and destroyed. But I would always go to these job sites and watch him with amazement because he's the only one that could lay the rock. It was his vision. He didn't trust anyone else to see that vision. So it's like watching him work a puzzle. He'd take this rock, it would work, that rock would work. Well, of course, me, as a nine-year-old, I was finding boulders. You know, boulders about this size. Because remember, I was little bitty. And I would run up to him and say, Dad, Dad, can you put this in the rock wall? This is not part of his master plan. This rock meant nothing to what his vision was. But some way, somehow, he understood the importance to me, so he would put it there, and it felt like it was magic. It was meant to be there. So let's go forward just a little bit. Now I'm 13. My father has us doing chores, so I'm probably digging a hole, filling it back up, doing something like that. <laughs> and he walks out and says, son, I have something for you to do. Okay, what is that? I want you to build me a rock wall. Sir, I want you to build me a rock wall. Oh, you want me to help you build a rock wall? No, this is yours. All of a sudden, it's like, what? I'm about to be a man. My dad is trusting me today. This is the evolution of what I can be. Right now, again, I'm 13 years old. This is an amazing thing for me. I said, okay, what's, what do I need to do? He said, I need it about right here, 30 foot long, four rocks high, no mortar, dry stack it, level, backfill it. Oh, I got this. In my head, I'm already seeing this rock wall. It's going to be the greatest rock wall ever. The Great Wall of China will not rival this thing. <laughs> I said, okay, where's my rocks? He backs up the truck, drops about six ton of rock on the ground. I got this. Now, again, I'm the run of the family, so I'm really small. So I'm grabbing it. I've got it all marked off. I've got to make sure it's level. And I'm having to push some of the foundation stones because they're so heavy to me. But I'm working all day. I'm nasty. I'm sweaty. I'm dirty. My father's coming and checking on me. He's giving me water. OK, OK, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm doing it all myself. Well, I get to that point, and I look at it, and I'm like, this is the most outstanding wall ever. I mean, I'm finished. It's taken me all day, but it's okay. I've done it myself. Well, then my father walks out, and we're standing there looking at it. Well, it's about education, right? I told you my father's pretty smart on this. So what were the lessons that I learned? Well, for a 13-year-old, let's say it's life lessons, the normal aspect of hard work, work ethic. He always talked about everyone's got a talent and a passion, but what's going to set you apart is the eye for detail and the endurance to do it the best that you can that day, knowing that tomorrow you could do it better. Okay, great. That's a 13-year-old's thought process. And then it hit me. No, wait, I'm just free labor. Well, now let's fast forward to now and when I said some of these lessons are now just hitting me. I'm looking at it going, what did he really teach me? Well, he dove into what I call unscripted learning. He didn't give me a defined path. He let me choose my own direction, my own choices. Everything about that was mine. He also spoke in riddles all the time. Well, okay, that's the most frustrating way to teach anyone. I still do it myself. But anyway, but he would also make me answer the yes and no question for that riddle. That way I had both sides of the story, and I could make the wisest choice that I could make at that point. Okay, how about creativity? My father saw something in me. He saw some little spark that he needed to bring out. Well, he nurtured my curiosity. He allowed me to see things and touch things and do things. 
He also worked on my creative problem solving. Could I see these pieces as puzzle pieces and put these rocks together by myself? I hope so. And also, he allowed me to capture what I call the invisible. It's something that you see that no one else sees around you. But you reach out and you grab it and you bring it back to show the world. That's my rock wall. Well, on top of that, he's also teaching me intuition. Each one of these things are happening, and it's allowing me to gather courage. Also, the confidence to know that I'm making the right choices that I think is right then, right there. Because he's wanting me to be instinctive. He wants it to be like every piece is natural to me. Because hopefully one day I can do it all by myself without asking for any help, any question, or any approval. So now, we're standing there, I'm bowed up, right? Chest poked out. I'm waiting for those magical phrases. Son, great job. I'm so proud of you. It's not what I heard. He looked at me and said, there's too many big ones over here together, too many little ones right there. You've got to tear it down and start all over. All of a sudden, it's failure. For a 13-year-old, failure is devastating. I let myself down. I let my father down because I couldn't do the job right. Well, so I tore it down, and as I'm stacking it and I'm stacking, I look at my father. I'm like, when did you know this was happening? He said, son, in the first 10 minutes, you were doing it wrong. Why didn't you tell me? He said, because you'd have never seen it for yourself. That's how you learn. And that's right there. I knew his wisdom and understanding of positive failure. Because the only thing that you can claim for yourself, or one of the only things that you can claim for yourself, is your failures. It allows you to grow from your mistakes. It allowed me to understand that right now I've done it wrong, but I can learn and be better. But on top of that, he was teaching me how to be human. What do you mean by human? He immersed me into this project, making sure I was doing it all by myself, respecting those who have to do it for a living, walking in their shoes to make sure that I understand what the effort and mistakes and triumphs are. To me, it allowed me to join on the journey that I'm on now as an educator. It's for me to make sure the next generations are greater than I'll ever be. So for me, it's not about giving spoons to students and spoon feeding them information. No, it's about a rock. It's giving them a rock so they can start their own journey. They can make their own mistakes, their own choices. But it's also there for me to make sure that I have a lending hand and I'm there to help guide them to the next phase. My name is Owen Foster. I'm an educator, I'm a mentor, an all around troublemaker. But I have one gift. You. Come here, please. Come on. Come uh, up here. I don't know you. E either one. It doesn't matter. It's my job to pass the rock to the next person. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.